Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day eight of the July Lico Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me in Discord. Let me know what you think. Um, it's already a week into July. Hope everyone's doing all right. Keep that streak going. And let's go over today's farm maximum length of repeated sub array. So I usually sub these live. So if it's a little bit slow, um, you know, fast forward or, or watch it on 2x, whatever you need to do. Okay, so given two integer arrays, numbers one, number two, we turn the maximum length of sub array that appears in both arrays. Okay, so this is essentially um, a sub array, right? Huh. Just want to make sure. So, I think one thing that you um, you get used to is kind of re making sure you're getting the definition right uh, on sub array and sub sequences and all that stuff. You know, usually, um, and I know that, especially on Code Force or other things, um, they're very well defined and they kind of give you, and they even give you the refresher of, of the very really precise definition, but definitely some of the older problems and older judges, they are a little bit vague and ambiguous about it. Um, in this case, it seems like sub array. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I actually, to be honest, when I first read this, I was thinking longest common subsequence, which is a very straightforward um, dynamic programming problem. I mean, it's not that straightforward, but it is if you're starting out with dynamic programming, that's going to be one of the, one of those example topics that you learn very, um, like very, uh, yeah, it's just one of those topics that you learn very quickly. Um, but here I'm going to read sub array as contiguous, right? And what I mean by con contiguous is just, you know, they're all next to each other. The other thing to kind of think about is that n is only a thousand. So given that, you can actually do this in n squared time pretty trivially. Um, I'm trying to think whether that is the right move to do. Um, and I think that is maybe... Well, I mean, with dynamic programming, it would, it would have been n squared anyway, but with respect to the longest common subsequence instead of sub array, but try to think whether because so so my hesitancy about doing it the n square way is that it is a very trivial solution, um, and it's a very not interesting solution, which is why I'm like, is there something that's less uh, uh, less obvious and maybe more interesting? Mm, maybe I'll take a hint on that. Okay, but that is a re really weird hint. I mean, it is something that we talked about for longest common subsequence. Um, and I wish that they had a better example that showcases this because, because for both of these examples, it can still be either answer. And I don't know why you would do dynamic programming for straight n square loop which is why I'm also even getting a little bit thrown off by the hint. Um, unless I'm really miss... Yeah. Hmm. Oh, wait, is... So, hmm. So the idea behind the n square algorithm, maybe we'll just do the n square uh, algorithm way, and then we'll see whether my interpretation is correct. Um, if I was obviously in an interview, I would just ask the interviewer, but uh, I don't, you know, that's not an option right now. So yeah, th so the n square solution is just basically okay. So you have you're given these two arrays, you you have some offset to kind of adjust and then after that you can just go one by one to 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 you can just go one by one to um to get the maximum length of the repeated sub array right so okay so that, that let's do it that way and if it happens that this is going to be subsequent we could go over that solution too um if not then then well then we just get the answer right so now we can yeah, so then now we, we can write of 
now what I'm thinking about is, okay, what's the easiest way to write it without or with as few special cases as possible? So let's um, let's write a helper function that goes get longest. Yeah, let's just say get longest, and this will get us get the longest common sub uh sub array where. Where we shift num we shift nums to right, um and what I want want to do here is just that we only shift nums to, so when we're talking about just JSON you can actually shift them like in both directions right because you can think about it as let's say you have one two three whatever I don't know four five six um and and they'll actually n times two type ish sh uh, shifting because you can shift this all the way here um so that there's overlaps and oops. And you can also shift the one on the bottom. And if we have one, but they um, they have a similar solution, right? So you can actually just write it once and then um, change the order or something like that. Uh, what, and if that doesn't make sense yet, uh, we'll go over it. But yeah, so now, so the number of offset is equal, uh, n is equal to length of nums one m is equal to length of nums2 say and then we have 4 offset is in range of n because we want to shift only nums2 yeah then it so if num mm, maybe we could write a helper function here as well so yeah let's do that so best is equal to zero best is equal to max of best get overlap maybe uh, nums one nums two offset and then we just return best and then here we can just get get the overlap nums one nums two and then offset and here we just move we just start nums two with that offset so so yeah so best is equal to zero, count is equal to zero, current count. So we have four, index is in range of, um, let's see, where are, so basically, hmm, is it N or M? Hmm, I have to think. So basically the statement is if nums one of index plus offset, is equal to nums two the index then we do count increment by one else count is equal to zero um, because if they're not the same then you know it's not contiguous anymore okay so then now this just basically goes until um mm, i guess technically m but we also need to um yeah make sure that is within n and you can actually already terminate by breaking i know but i'm just trying to make sure that this is right so far and then we can in theory optimize later so then now we just return get longest of nums one nums two and then get longest of the other way nums two nums one due to symmetry and that's kind of the things that i would look for right it's symmetry so that you can um call things in a easier way i think that's the other example and then now here we can actually test if they mean longest repeated or longest common subsequence like array or a subarray i suppose um yeah and we can test that by having just i guess even here should be okay are they the same length nope okay basically yeah okay so that's good then then our assumption is correct because here we can see that we have an for if, if this is subsequence then then this is you know four instead of three so okay so let's give it a submit oh okay 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is... Before we go over it, I'm still curious about the dynamic programming solution in the sense that it doesn't... It, I mean, you can't do it that way, obviously. It's it's the same as uh, the longest common subsequent, except for in a way spe in a more specific way. But I'm curious whether there's a solution that we missed. But let's go over this one real quick. Um, so... So this one, um, here we do it twice where we just, you know, like I said, we shift it to the left, shift it to the right, um, and shifting it to the left is equal to um, swapping the arrays and then shifting it to the right, right? So that's why we have we do this thing here. Um, and then here, this is going to be an obvious O of n time because uh, this is o, the, iterate, the loop iterates O of n times um, because... Well, you only have, you have a for loop, and here it also um, you you iterate it all of m times, say uh, n plus m because whatever is shorter, I suppose. Um, so this is going to be n square, and we only do it twice. So so yeah, at the end this is going to be n plus m square, roughly, because that's the notation of. Uh, so yeah, so overall time. You go oh, n n plus m square, and and space is gonna be O of one, right? Because we don't we just keep pointers and have a couple of variables. Yeah, so that's all I have for my um, code. Hope this is good. Um, I'm gonna click on this to see what the intended solution is because I think that I know that there's a dynamic programming one, but it seems unnecessary, which is why it was a little bit of a confusion slash. Um, yeah, I think this, I think this is the more naive one, um, but yeah, you should not do it that way because it's n cube. Say binary search with naive check. Why do they write all these weird algorithms? Hmm. Dynamic programming. I guess so. I mean, eh. binary search with rolling hash. Wow. Why would they write such weird ones? Oh, hmm. I didn't realize, actually. Let me think about this. Hmm. That is maybe an interesting one, but... But it requires a lot more math, obviously, with you know inverse uh, modular inverse and stuff like that. But we can binary search for the answer. Hmm, I guess so. I mean, yeah, I mean this answer is all, uh, actually it's kind of amusing because this is literally um, the problem that we had for the last Q four, except for we only have two numbers instead of. Or two arrays instead of k arrays. So, um, so maybe if I, if we had done this pro uh, problem last week or something, then we would have done the very well in the contest if we looked up the solution. Um, but yeah, um, but for that video, definitely. Well, just check out my my video from from for the Q four on the contest. Um, that's all I'm gonna have for this one for today. Uh, stay good, stay cool. Have a good rest of the week. Uh, I will see you later and to good mental health. Bye-bye.